Hello everyone! I'm so happy to be back with another collaboration tutorial with Eclipse Studio Paint. Clip Studio Paint is the software I use for all of my illustrations, and it's literally the backbone behind my webtoon production. If you didn't know already, Clip Studio Paint comes with a free trial, so you can check it out yourself and try it if you haven't yet. So, this time I want to talk about a solution for a problem that many of us face, which is how to blend characters with the background. You know, sometimes you draw characters, but their color scheme doesn't really match the background and they feel so separated out of the environment they're in. So in this tutorial, I want to show you multiple methods that I apply in my artworks, especially in my webtoon drawing, in order to blend my characters with the background, regardless of the color palette. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll be working on this panel from my webtoon with a forest background that I made completely within Clip Studio Paint using brushes and image assets, which I've linked down below in the description box. Generally, I get the majority of my brushes and image materials from Clip Studio assets. It's one of Clip Studio's highlights, and I visit it almost on a daily basis to download countless interesting images and brush materials and other assets. So now let's go over those methods one by one. The first and the simplest method is by creating a new clipped layer on top of your character and then picking a color from the background, for example this color and then I'll select my character and go to edit, fill to fill her with a solid color Now I selected her here because I'm drawing a webtoon and it's on a very long canvas so instead of filling the whole canvas which can take a lot of time selecting and filling this way takes less time Anyway, I'll deselect from here and then change the blending mode of this layer by going to multiply and now seeing this, the color doesn't look really right so I'm gonna tweak it a little bit by hitting Ctrl and U on my keyboard to bring the hue saturation luminosity window or you can also get it by going to edit tonal correction, hue saturation luminosity. I'll make the color lighter by increasing the luminosity and I'll reduce the saturation a bit to make it more grayish and I'll change the hue a bit, take it more towards the bluish side. She looks much better now. But to further improve this, I'll choose an airbrush tool and I'll choose the soft one and I'll increase the size like this and I'll pick a color from the background from this side, for example this color and I'll lightly airbrush her from this side and then same thing from this side I'll pick a color from the background for example this one and again I'll lightly airbrush this side of her so now if I return the layer mode to normal you can see that the solid color is no longer solid but it has some sort of a gradient which gives a more interesting result that's one method another method you can do is you can merge all the layers of your character and duplicate it so what I'm gonna do now, I have my character drawn on a group and these are all her layers and all of her shading is on one layer so I'm gonna select both and right click and then duplicate layer and I'll right click again and click merge selected layers now I have another copy of my character I'll clip it to my original character's layers and then I'll click on this button over here to colorize my character now as you can see, it has colorized it based on these two colors, blue and white so if I change those two colors, the colorization will also be different. So what I'll do is, I'll change the colors, and again, I'll pick colors from the background. So I'll pick the darkest color here, which is this green, and I'll pick the lightest color, for example, this kind of light green. But I feel like the colors don't look that good, the contrast isn't that apparent, so I'll go back to the color and change it a bit, choose some darker color like this and take it more towards the blue side and I feel that this has given the character more contrast. So we can go ahead and play around with the layer modes again. For example, multiply gives this kind of result, which is interesting and a little bit different than what we got earlier, since this kind of colorization takes the values of the colors of the character into consideration, so the colors come out a little bit different. But it's a little bit desaturated, so it's not my favorite so far. I'm gonna keep scrolling over the blending modes and see what comes up. For example, I found that hue mode with low opacity gives somewhat a good result. And we can also enable the layer we initially made and mix and match. To be honest, this is how I approach blending my character with the background. I keep trying between these several methods. Sometimes one can work, sometimes a combination of more than one. So I keep experimenting, which now leads me to talk about the next point. I'm still not happy with these colors and I want to increase their vibrancy more. So what I'm gonna do is I'll head to my favorite form of layers, which are color adjustment layers and which you can find under layer, 
new correction layer and then we have all of these now i don't always use all of these i'll just show you the ones i mainly use most importantly the tone curve i'll just click ok and go to the layer and clip it so that any changes in the colors apply to the character only not the background because i don't want to change the background so now that it's clipped i'll double click on it again now this might look confusing at first when you see it like you don't really know what to do but let me tell you it's very simple to understand on the left side of the graph we control the dark tones of the image or the shadows and on the right side we control the light tones or the highlights and in the middle we control the mid tones and if we take this curve upwards then we're adding lightness but if we take it downwards, we're subtracting lightness, which is technically we're adding darkness. And this is happening because we are in the RGB mode. So basically now, let's say I work on the curve this way, bring this curve upwards on this side, then I made the light colors even lighter, and bring the curve downwards on this side, then I made the dark colors darker. And if I play with this, then I control the midtones. Now of course this is not looking good so I'm just gonna click reset to get back to my starting point. But this is not all. The fun part is that you can control different channels of the colors to get even more combinations. So for now we were changing all of the colors at once. But for example if we go to red and take the curve upwards then we're adding red. But if we take it downwards then we subtract redness which would give us a bluish look. Same thing if we go for green. If we take the curve upwards then we add green and if we take it downwards then we subtract green and basically make the colors look more purplish or towards magenta and finally for the blue if we take it upwards then we add blue and if we take it downwards then we subtract blue or basically make the colors yellowish so with that in mind i can just play around with the curves until i get the result that i find looks suitable for my artwork for example, I think the mid-tones and the light parts need some yellowness, but the darker values need some blueness. So I got this result, but I'm not very satisfied with it. It feels too greenish. So I decided to hide the layer we created in the previous step. And I'll go back to the tone curve and adjust it again. I can also play with the opacity of this tone curve. And I can also change the blending mode. I decided to keep it on normal mode because it looked better. We can also improve those colors by going to layer, new correction layer and choosing color balance. I'll click OK and clip it again so that I only change the colors of the character. And I'll double click to get the window again. Now for color balance, it's also divided into half tone, highlight and shadows. For example, now I'm on shadows. So if I take the slider towards the blue, then I'm making my shadows more blue. And if I take it towards yellow, then I'm making my shadows yellow. And so on. That's for shadows. And the same thing for half tones, which are the colors in the middle, and for highlights, same thing. So in this case, or generally I like to take the colors more towards the blue for the shadows, something like this, and maybe some cyan. Half tone, we can experiment a little bit with the green, maybe some red. And highlight a bit towards yellow, something like this. So look at the before and after. It feels like the character matches the background better now. Another method we can do is, we can create a new layer and we don't need to clip it this time. I'll just pick colors from the background, for example this green. And using the airbrush tool, I'll lightly airbrush around the character by continuously picking colors from the background and brushing over her. This is one way of doing it. But another way we can do is, we can take colors both from the background for example here I'm taking the light greens and airbrushing over her and on this side I'll take some of her colors and brush over the background so again see the before and after and I can have a new layer on top of everything and I'll pick a light color from the background for example this light green and I'll airbrush from one side to indicate the sunlight direction and I can change this layer mode to soft light or hard light or overlay I think overlay looks the best. And if I want to take it a step further, then I can pick a color from this side and create a new layer and airbrush everything and then change the layer mode to multiply or hard light maybe. You know, it's a fun game of mix and match until you get a result you're satisfied with. One last thing I can do is, I feel that her hair and her face look a little bit too greenish and I want them to be more pinkish. Instead of adding more layers, I'll just check my layers and see which one is making her look this green. It's probably this one, the solid layer we added at the beginning. 
So I want to erase a little bit of this to show more of her colors, but I want to do non-destructive erasing. So I'll click on this button to create a layer mask, and then while on the layer mask and using a soft eraser, I'll just lightly erase the parts covering her hair and face. So now if I hide this mask, if I disable it, then I can see the before, and clicking on it again will show the after. So after applying all of these steps, this is how the character looks now. This was before the edits. The character scheme was pinkish and the background was greenish and they definitely didn't match. And this is how she looks like after all the edits we've made. Using these same methods and maybe experimenting with other color adjustment layers, you can come up with amazing outcomes. But one last thing I want to discuss is, as you know, the majority of people are not gonna see your artwork on a computer screen, but rather on smartphones most of the time. So you might sometimes face this problem when you choose certain colors that look great on your PC, but then you get disappointed when you view the image on your phone. So to avoid that disappointment, Clip Studio Paint has an amazing solution which they recently implemented through something called the companion mode. You can easily view your artwork on your phone using Clip Studio Paint only without having to transfer anything. To be able to do that, you need to first of all have Clip Studio Paint app downloaded and installed on your phone or smart device. And then once you do that, click on the menu, then go to companion mode. And at the same time, click this button over here to connect to smartphone and you'll get a QR code. On your phone, tap on scan QR code and scan the code and then, like magic, you can see your artwork on your phone. And while doing this, you can make any kind of adjustments to your artwork and immediately see the outcome on your phone. So this means that you can simply adjust the colors while looking at both screens and focusing on your phone screen until you get the result that you're happy with. And by doing that, you're gonna avoid the disappointment and you'll hopefully be happy with the colors that you have chosen. I highly recommend this. Whether you're just doing illustrations or drawing a colored comic or a webtoon, it's very helpful and it will save you a lot of stress and frustration. So these are all the tips I wanted to talk to you about. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel for more. And thank you so much for watching.